with Microsoft clearly prioritizing short-term shareholder value over long-term customer happiness and low-key enabling self-destruct mode for our beloved Windows operating system, it is important to remember that the actual part we, the users, care about is not the Windows itself, it is Win32 API. That's right, this thing. This thing powers all of the games you've ever played on the computer, it powers a lot of important stuff, and you know, if there were a certain other operating system that could run these applications, then maybe we don't really need Windows anymore. And on top of that, if only there was a way to build Windows application on that other operating system, maybe, you know, we're golden. Maybe we don't care about what Microsoft is doing. This is what this video is going to be about. MinGW is an amazing project that provides you a GCC-based uh, compiler toolchain that works on Windows itself. It gives you an alternative to compile C and C++ code, uh, you know, alternative to Clang and MSVC. And on top of that, it lets you cross-compile a Windows PE executables. PE stands for Portable Executable on Linux. And then you can go to Windows and run them, or you know, you can just use Wine. And this is what we're gonna do today. Uh, just go to getting started, select your favorite Linux distribution. For me, it's gonna be Arch Linux. Uh, grab this uh, little line, open the terminal, paste and press enter. Uh, one, two, three, enter your very secure uh, password. And for me, it's already installed. So all good on this department. And after that, let's play around with it. The way you compile the code with MinGW is not any different from GCC. You just give it a uh, file name, so main.c and uh, dash o hello.exe. And after we wait, we can do ldd on the hello. You can see it shows it's not a dynamic executable. And if we try to run it, look at what actually happens it initializes a bunch of wine stuff. So yeah, we, at least on my machine, it correctly uh, gets that it needs to run it with wine. And after a bunch of crap output, we get hello windows. So yeah, but hello world is kind of boring. Maybe let's grab something more advanced that uses more windows features and see how MinGW copes with that. My cross-platform key remapper Hitboxer is currently written in Jai programming language, but the very first, very initial version of it was actually written in C, and it was just one file, and it's just pure Win32 application with uh, 600 lines of code, and it actually uses Windows uh, stuff quite extensively, so it creates a Windows, so it's not just a console application. It has a proper event loop with translate dispatch. It uses a bunch of uh, key mapping functions from Win32 API, and it links few libraries. So user32, uh, shlwapi, and it also should probably link GDI. So let's try to compile that and see if it works. Uh, so I can just go in here and copy the raw file, and then go to Emacs and paste it. And now let's try to compile it. Let's actually clear the terminal and run MinGW. So it's gonna be uh, this and output, let's call it SOCD. This is the what it's got. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. What do we have here? Old style uh, type help RAM defaults to int. What's that? Let's find it. Uh, whoops, <laughs> I'm a professional C developer, as you can see. Uh, let's compile it again. What does it have else to say to us? And, oh, it actually can't find a reference to path strip. I happen to know for a fact that you need to link it with shlwapiating this thing. Yeah, and now it compiles. Uh, so let's actually run it and see if it works. Got exe. And oh, wow, look at this. It actually, it was actually able to do it. So this is a legit Windows GUI application that renders text, has hitboxes, uh, sorry, it's like radio buttons. 
and you can probably click bind escape and press button and if i click a button you see it actually works so let me yeah escape is bound to backspace i'm just actually like clicking different buttons yeah the, the functionality is fully working and if i close this application and i run ls it even has a config file so it is it's even able to uh, you know interoperate with the file system create files and whatnot i would say this is pretty impressive it just worked out of the box in the same exact way as i would compile and run it on windows that's pretty amazing uh let's maybe try to run something even more advanced maybe something that looks more like a game the best example i could think of is of course handmade hero and if you look at this i have access to handmade hero source code because i bought it a while ago and i checked out day 20 on my computer and this is the last day before case introduced a separate dll hot login we don't care about it I want to check if things like graphics, sound, and uh, player controller actually just work out of the box or I need to uh, do some heavy modifications to the source code. And uh, if we look at it this particular day, it still has the cool handmade hero gradient on the screen that is uh, getting uh, bleed on the screen with uh, stretch die bleed. Also, there should be some kind of a sound code, a yeah, game output sound. And also there should be X input in the code base. And uh, yes, we have a bunch of code to load X input. So I think that's the right day that I checked out and let's try to compile it. For this, let's take a look at how actually Casey built this day. He has a very simple build at bat. Thank you very much, Casey, for not having a freaking C make <laughs> or something crazy like this, or like a Visual Studio solution. So what do we have here? Uh, this is a bunch of uh, yeah, a bunch of compiler flags. I think we only care about these defines. So let me actually turn visual uh, line mode in Emacs so I can see the full line here and let me copy these three let me paste them so this is going to be our link line user 32 gdi and vin and m so let's paste it and gcc likes to do it like dash l so dash l this dash l this and dash l this after that, what file do we want to compile? We want to compile win32 handmade-cpp. So this is gonna be somewhere here and maybe dash o uh, hmh.exe. I, I think I can just call it hmh. And then we need an actual executable. So x ecc. This is the one. Let's try to compile it. Win handmade. Oh yeah, I need to of course uh, cd to cpp and where was it cd code and okay we need to use a 32 lib no such file oh yes it's because we don't actually need lib suffixes when we compile with mingw it recognizes them by their name we actually compiled so i actually don't know if you saw that uh behind my head but let me just run it again for you this is the final line uh, ported from build.bat and yeah when i press enter it compiles with a couple warnings and then if i uh, run hmh exe it should technically run the famous handmade hero gradients let's try it out damn <laughs> that actually worked that's crazy uh, let's put it here so it has some debug for sound i can resize it and technically, if I grab my controller, so here is my very fancy, totally legit Hori controller. And if I flick my stick, the gradient should move. And when I flick it up and down, it should uh, pitch the sound. So, hey, look at this. It actually freaking works. How cool is that? And <laughs> this is amazing. And the craziest thing is that i didn't need to change literally anything yeah let's let's close that yeah 
everything just worked out of the box. This is honestly very uh, surprising to me that it's just this good. I I'm 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 legitimately blown away. I'm I'm very happy about this experiment. So there we are. Maybe in the future we won't even care that Microsoft self-destructs Windows. Maybe we will just be chilling on Linux, compiling our games with MinGW or something else, targeting Steam Deck runtime, and it's all just going to work thanks to Valve and a lot of volunteers that keep improving the ecosystem on Linux. And you know, with certain very good debugger finally getting Linux port, maybe we just chill and maybe it's all going to be good. I'm gonna put links to everything I showed and talked about in the description and I also have plans for some long-term video so if you like what you see feel free to subscribe and I'll see you next time. 2030 year of Linux desktop.